so welcome friends to yet another lecture today we will be seeing the significance of microorganisms in food but before that i would like to just uh, clarify certain aspects of the syllabus in this unit when you see the syllabus it may seem a bit confusing but it is divided like this what is there in your screen the significance of microorganisms in food will be divided into three lectures from here onwards and today's lecture is the first one that is beneficial microbes next we will be seeing harmful microbes and in that if you see spoilage types of spoilage food poisoning types of food poisoning in which your syllabus is restricted to three food poisoning aspects botulism staphylococcal infection and salmonellosis these will be the parts covered in harmful microbes a totally different topic of discussion will be food preservation which will form the part of my third lecture and thus here your unit will be completed so today let us just see what are beneficial microbes harmful and food preservation in subsequent lectures so make that clear see your syllabus and this is the branching of the topics which i am going to discuss now as i am saying we will be discussing the beneficial aspects having said that microbes they have a beneficial aspect harmful aspect and as well as uh, when it comes to harmful spoilage as well as those causing illness but today i will touch upon the beneficial role only and how the microorganisms in food if you see on the screen the left side there is a mold and a cheese is getting spoiled and on the right side there are some bacteria which are shown which are useful so they are playing a significant role in both in benefiting your body and your life systems as well as damaging that causing illness etc so the beneficial microorganisms and the not so beneficial organisms they have their own role as i said we will see it one by one the good and the bad of microorganisms when you categorize it the beneficial effects of a microbial activity is its fermentation when a microorganism is fermenting some substrate it gives rise to certain products which may be beneficial for us in long term so cheese yogurt fermented sausages wine sauerkraut probiotics that is curd etc these are the beneficial effects of microorganisms when they are growing the harmful effects they include food borne diseases food infections food poisoning viral infections and food spoilage as i said just now that will form the structure of my next lecture so what is basically the role of microorganisms in preparing certain foods microorganisms they are involved in the production of foods and beverages and this is not something new we indians or asians as such we have been practicing this uh, as a tradition from long time fermentation it produces characteristic flavors aromas and consistencies in various foods bread is there uh, your curd is there and if you go to certain regions you will have some unique fermented food in maharashtra if you come anarsa we say north you go jalebi is there south you go dhokla uh, in gujarat dhokla is there in south you go idli dosa etc these are all fermented foods which involve bacteria so they produce a characteristic flavor regional flavor is there aroma is there and consistency of that food which is very unique uh, what you can say to the uh, property of that food the culinary value of that food and not why only culinary value the market value of the food is also very important here industrial microbiology involves food microbiology also that you will study in your subsequent semesters so microbial metabolism fermentation is a aspect of microbial metabolism and it has other functions also the product which arises from microbial fermentation like for example citric acid may act as a preservative it can destroy many other pathogenic microbes and toxins by certain compounds which they synthesize which are called as antibiotics or bacteriocins they can add nutritional value to the uh, food like in the form of uh, proteins vitamins 
एटसेट्रा ईस्ट इट सेल्फ इज अ सिंगल सेल प्रोटीन विच वन कंज्यूम्ड इट विल बी अ वेरी गुड सोर्स ऑफ प्रोटीन देर फॉर माइक्रोब्स दे आर यूज इन फूड प्रोडक्शन सो द मेन टॉपिक ऑफ थॉट टूडे डिस्कशन टूडे विल बी द बेनिफिशियल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स अंडर द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ यूज ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन फूड सो एज आई सेट लेट स्टार्ट विद द गुड बैक्टेरिया बैक्टेरिया विच आर हेल्पफुल एंड दे फॉर्म अ सॉर्ट ऑफ सिम्बॉटिक एसोसिएशन वेन दे आर इन साइड योर बॉडी एंड प्रीडोमिनेटली इन द गट वी कॉल इट एज द गट फ्लोरा सो फॉर द कोलॉन दैट इज द गट इंटेस्टाइन प्रो एंड प्रीबायोटिक्स प्रोबायोटिक्स एंड प्रीबायोटिक्स दीज आर द टू टर्मिनोलॉजीज विच आर इन वोक टूडे द फ्रेंडली बैक्टेरिया फॉर द फर्मेंटेशन दीज आर कॉल्ड प्रोबायोटिक्स दिस इज एक्जैक्टली रिवर्स ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स एंटीबायोटिक्स आर केमिकल्स विच किल द बैक्टेरिया एंड देर फोर दे हैव सम हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स ऑन द बॉडी बट वेन इट कम्स टू प्रोबायोटिक्स दे आर प्रो टू लाइफ प्रो मीन्स फॉर लाइफ एंड दे डोंट किल द होल कंसेप्ट इज दैट इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ गुड बैक्टेरिया अप टू सच एक्सटेंट दैट ऑल द बैड बैक्टेरिया विल बी ऑटोमेटिकली किल्ड सो दीज फ्रेंडली बैक्टेरिया फॉर fermentation of the food used are called as probiotics and prebiotics is something uh, which support the probiotic bacteria that is fibers the fiber in the food which allows the probiotic bacteria to grow foods for the colon health you see in time immemorial in the indian culture we have a tradition of ending our food with curd rice or at least one cup of curd it is said in the scriptures it is said that on the earth if there is nectar prithvi varcha amrut that is on the earth if there is amrut nectar it is curd it is said and it should be consumed in the end at the last at least one cup of curd why because when you eat it in the intestine lastly this curd bacteria will reside and they will be giving good health to your body foods for the colon health probiotic bacteria or live bacteria when you eat a cup of curd or chanch that is buttermilk then that cultivates the good bacteria in your colon it improves the intestinal microbial balance and uh, for for that purpose curd is there yogurt is there these are live cultures and this is called as probiotic therapy consuming products with beneficial bacteria and supplements which are residing in your colon and they will help the uh, what you can say process of life by giving vital components like vitamins amino acids etc pro means life for life live microorganisms which when administered in adequate amounts they give a health benefit to the host we are the host when you consume it we cultivate it in them our intestine and colon and they give a supportive type of role for our health the prebiotics this is this is the fiber fiber in the food okay which is supporting the probiotic bacteria this is a new new concept which has arisen in the recent times prebiotics and probiotics prebiotics they stimulate the beneficial bacteria in the colon means when you eat fibrous foods these fibrous foods it supports the uh, probiotics by cleaning your colon there are many sources of prebiotics whole grain is there dairy products are there legumes are there leafy green vegetables are there banana is there berries means all this which contains rich fiber and which will help cleaning the colon once the colon is clean these bacteria they can adhere to the walls of the intestine or the colon and they can multiply these are called as prebiotics now why a, what is abnormal gut flora and what does it do means our lifestyle you see it is somewhere harming the gut flora or the internal body systems and the microorganisms which develop inside your body it is called as the human microbiome these are very important remember for your whole life and you have bought them from your mother's womb your mother gave it to them through your through the through her intestine and as it came to you you should cultivate it but what happens our lifestyle like smoking western type of diet we are living in marathwada maharashtra parbani and we are dying to eat uh, chinese food why of course the word is very appropriate here the pun is intended dying to eat 
or eating to die whatever it is no regional and seasonal type of food should be consumed physical activity level is very abnormal this leads to abnormal gut flora we are always sitting or sleeping or slouching or lazing around without any physical activity then public health practices which are there we are not physically more active now we are having smaller families which gives rise to lower uh, physical work then there is premature delivery nowadays cesarean is at large perinatal antibiotic use small kids they are administered with a huge dose of antibiotic which disturbs the complete flora of the gut right from their birth then lack of breastfeeding earlier uh, in older days up to 8 9 10 uh, what you can say a uh, so, so not only months but i reckon up to 2 years 3 years the baby was breastfed with mother's milk but nowadays the mothers themselves they are lacking the uh, milk in their body so this gives rise to abnormal gut flora in the mother as well as the infant and this gives rise to health conditions like type 2 diabetes cancer heart diseases high levels of cholesterol obesity digestive disorders allergies common cold infections diarrhea lactose intolerance and impaired immunity all this can be easily recovered if you have a good lifestyle with lot of probiotic consumption and probiotics are the microorganisms in the food the good microorganisms that is the probiotics where does this human probiotics they go and they are helpful they are helpful not only in the gastrointestinal tract but they help you recover the skin scalp oral oral cavity underarm feet urogenital vaginal uh, flora which is their uti infections vaginal infections urinary tract infections these are very common amongst the mature women and men and women and the main reason for that is the disturbed flora gut flora or the inner body flora for that the food has to be good the food containing good microorganisms should be consumed and this only happens when you eat regional seasonal traditional and homemade foods so this is very uh, beneficial and the benefits they which you can derive are increased tolerance to infection then you can control the diarrhea loose motions or always a disturbed digestive tract can be reduced blood pressure can be controlled cholesterol can be reduced and allergy will be controlled so all this can will uh, le- lead to a modulation of your immune system means the immune system will become strong naturally chronic diseases like cancer can be overcome when you have this is not just going to the market and take bringing something one and eating for one day it should become a lifestyle so that is the benefit of significance of microorganisms in food so how does this probiotics act probiotics are bacteria good bacteria which help in the development of mucosal barrier means when you consume something you have a mucosal system all the slimy system right from nose now uh, the throat even for covid the mucosal barrier is very important synthesis of vitamins are carried out by the probiotics metabolism of bile acids which helps in controlling the pathogenic bacteria production of short chain fatty acids which is good that is the good cholesterol which is needed in the body reduction in ph in large bowel your stomach may be acidic but as it goes further there is uh, alkalinity or a neutrality needed and that is maintained by the good bacteria when you eat curd as i said as it passes the stomach barrier and goes into the intestine there it will rest and you will have a beneficiary aspect immune system will be activated there are lot of probiotic products no wonder in the market <laughs> nowadays with respect to the uh, huge health benefits which it is promising so dairy foods like beverages yogurt curd kefir probiotic ice creams are there cheese is one very good probiotic compound and when you talk about the non dairy foods certain beverages bars chocolates cereals pizza condiments they they are coming up with but it is very difficult for a 
layman or a common man to distinguish between the good product and the bad product. Everybody will say that we are a probiotic compound, but the production process is important. For that, the government regulatory authority is there and all these details you can study when you come to postgraduate section. Anyway, there are dietary supplements also which are probiotic in nature, small uh, medicines which are for small children, infant formula, drops, tablets, capsules, powders, all the pediatric medicine today they are heavily loaded with probiotic products and the cl clinical therapeutics also means earlier what they used to do is that if you have acidity then an antacid tablet was given, not anymore, antacid tablets are not given anymore. Probiotic tablets are given which contain live bacteria. When you consume them, that will be dispersed and bacteria will be uh, present in your intestine or inside the body. So no wonder there is a rapid emergence of probiotics as a food. This is the biggest significance of microorganisms in food probiotics. But probiotics is not all. There are many other types of microorganisms which help in producing good food. That I will be telling in the next slides. But the reported health benefits of probiotic bacteria which are found in the culture and dairy products they include improved digestive absorption when you eat food that food needs to be absorbed and that absorption is enhanced by the presence of these bacteria inside your body. Cleaning the intestinal tract as I say prebiotics when you talk about prebiotics that is fiber it will be very uh, playing a beneficial role in cleaning the uh, intestine and thus allowing the uh, good bacteria to grow on the linings of your intestine. Increase, they increase the availability of vitamins, proteins, especially vitamin B, vitamin K, lactase, an enzyme which is responsible for breaking down the lactose. We do not have an enzyme for breaking down the lactose present in the milk and we consume such huge amount of milk products including the morning tea. When you consume it, you cannot digest it. Your body doesn't have the capacity to digest it. There are good bacteria which produce lactase and they break it down and then they provide the vitamins, proteins, amino acids, fatty acids and calcium to your body. Now, having said this all about probiotics, the significant aspect of microorganisms in food is not all about probiotics. It is much more bigger than that. If you see the various types of products which are regularly consumed, internationally you will see there are various microorganisms which are made to grow on different types of uh, substrates like milk wheat rye etc if you see the table internationally bread is consumed and it is made by saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast and lab that is lactic acid bacteria the substrates used are when you say maida it is nothing but refined wheat rye and other grains are used in Pakistan, naan is used, all Arab countries also, they use naan and Saccharomyces cerevisiae forms a very important part of the uh, fermentation of the duff of the naan using wheat flour. Internationally, soy sauce is used, it is a very common additive in the Chinese foods and it is made from the fungus Aspergillus oryzae, Aspergillus soy and Lactobacillus bacteria and it is very rich in uh, proteins, vitamins, amino acids and it is made for because it is made from soya bean and wheats. Cheese is an international product which is product of milk using lactic acid bacteria. Milk and milk solids by using thermo, uh, Streptococcus thermophilus and Streptococcus bulgaricus they form produce yogurt. It is an international product. Yogurt is nothing but curd Yogurt and curd are not different, but when you prepare curd, you don't control the type of microorganisms in the curd. When you prepare yogurt, you know which microorganism is present in that. So that develops a typical type of flavor and uh, what you can say, aroma to the yogurt. Yogurt is a controlled known thing, everything. The color, the microorganism, the product aroma everything can be controlled that is yogurt and when you generally add any type of lactic acid bacteria in milk and allow it to uh, curdle into curd that is curd so uh, next is using cabbage yes gobi which you call in hindi that can be used for lactic acid bacteria and sauerkraut by fermentation process these are the beneficial microorganisms which can be used for food production itself see here we are not talking about in food 
of course they are a part and parcel of food they are used in processing and preparing of the food also processing of some fermented food we will see so i will give some very common uh, procedures you need not go in much deep but this is a lecture where uh, i i am trying to convey a message that microorganisms are a part and parcel of food production the composition of the food and when you eat your body composition becomes that microorganisms which you eat and when this is fresh and made up of microorganisms it gives you a good life a better health cheese is one very internationally famous product which is rich in most of the minor and major elements required for your body and the cheese making process is an art basically the process is very simple milk is treated with lactic acid bacteria and the enzyme called renin it hydrolyzes the protein present in the milk and it allows it to coagulate and that form curds when you add a uh, lactic acid bacteria in milk first thing which it does is the uh, renin it uh, enzyme it coagulates the protein into curds the liquid portion of the milk is called as whey all these bodybuilders they drink this whey whey can also be converted into powder and whey powder as a source of protein is consumed by many people on this uh, earth so the whey is separated from the curds and the curds they are aged that is ripened different microorganisms in the early and late stages of the process they give rise to cheese with different characters different countries they have different patented cheese bulgarian cheese swiss cheese etc and they are very famous and have a rich market all over the world the process of cheese as you can see in the picture is started with pasteurization of the milk by removing the unwanted mi microorganism and you add the wanted microorganisms this addition of wanted microorganism is called as starter culture so addition of a starter culture bacteria is there which allows as i said just said coagulation of the milk and coagulation of the proteins see the flow chart as i am speaking <coughs> so addition of starter culture it allows the uh, milk to coagulate and curd formation is there at that point two it gets separated into two different aspects whey and the unprocessed cheese this liquid part is removed as whey which is also a rich source of protein it is not thrown away it can be used itself as whey in um, food supplements or medicines or natural suticals natural products once the unprocessed cheese is taken as you can see it is spread and cut into uh pieces production of processed cheese through pressing addition of secondary microbial cultures and then keeping it for ripening as you can see in the figure this is a artistic process because if there is contamination the cheese will become so smelly pungent in smell that it cannot it will lose its market value and the uh, culinary value nobody will eat it but nevertheless when it is produced in a very nice fashion it is one of the most important uh, products in the market the next is yogurt yogurt is nothing but curd dahi dahi and yogurt they are not different but as i said when you control the type of microorganism so while producing curd it gives rise to yogurt milk is fermented by using streptococcus salivarius or a many types of streptococcus species are there streptococcus salivarius species thermophilus and lactobacillus bulgaricus lactobacillus bulgaricus these two organisms it is called as a co culture this co culture may be with other type of lactic acid bacteria like lacto lactobacillus acidophilus lactobacillus kz and bifidobacterium species these all are mixed in the milk and milk is allowed for fermentation it what we are doing here how this is different from curd is in curd virgin je apan takto that is general it is not having a specific type of bacteria but when you are adding a culture which is known in pure culture form curd is mixed culture this is pure culture co culture or we call as a consortium there is a difference between mixed culture uh, which is not pure and consortium consortium is different mixture of known quality quantity and number so this fermentation produces acid and causes the protein in the milk to coagulate into a semi solid curd this semi solid curd then is processed at this point of time you can add different flavors like strawberry peach 
or whatever the flavor is needed that can be added and but you see the main role is of uh, bacteria so raw milk is taken this raw milk is pasteurized this is the uh, way for yogurt production while you prepare dahi you don't add these things in a controlled manner raw milk is pasteurized then it is cooled then starter culture is added it is mixed fermentation is allowed to carry out cooling is done in cheese what you did was you pressed it removed the whey and cut it into cakes okay cheese even for some extent when you uh, go for a yogurt type production and remove the whey you get cheese type of lineage whereas for curd when you go for curd remove the whey you get paneer different types in different region are being uh, practiced but all have one thing in common they use the uh, microorganisms in production bread production is one very important uh, area of usage of microorganisms beneficiary microorganisms this is one of the oldest practiced art it involves the growth of saccharomyces cerevisiae which we call it as baker's yeast under aerobic conditions there is a maximum carbon dioxide production and this helps in leavening the bread the texture of the bread which is there that is due to co2 production and co2 is produced by saccharomyces cerevisiae see the importance of microorganisms other microbes they are used to make special breads in different types of the country sort of bread etc the western countries they don't have rotis chapatis naan etc they rely heavily on bread so they have different varieties of bread production and most of them they use different types of bacteria but common is baker yeast this can be spoiled by bacillus species and they can produce ropiness in the bread bread ropiness means when you just pull it there will be thread like structure or elastic that is not a good sign of bread production bacillus comes from soil but nevertheless as i said we will be dealing only with the beneficial aspects of uh, microorganisms in food the next product is vinegar vinegar is a acid acetic acid which is a fermented product not a chemical production and it has right now in the market apple cider vinegar vinegar is produced basically from the apple peels and that has a huge health benefit even fat reduction cholesterol con controlling and a healthy lifestyle can be achieved if you have a regular consumption of apple cider vinegar so vinegar is also used as a preservative and huge uh, applications in the human health and food is there it is produced as you can see in the flow chart by using some kilos of apple peelings extracting the saccharines means sugar is removed it is pressed after pressing waste is removed the raw juice is taken and tannins are removed by some process then heating is done the juice is concentrated at 20 bricks bricks is a value where sugar is added low amount of sugar not high amount of but low amount of sugar is added and here as you can say alcoholic fermentation takes place this is not alcohol try to understand this is addition of the bacteria responsible for alcoholic production where they will now we have not used the apple we have used apple peelings and we have removed the sugar and added very controlled amount of sugar this gives rise to a pathway towards alcohol fermentation but we do not allow it to go into alcohol fermentation we stop it at acetic acid or vinegar acetic acid is the end product here and acetic fermentation when it is stopped naturally it you you get rise to vinegar so again saccharomyces cerevisiae or many different types of bacteria natural air flora they can be used for vinegar production in your bsc third year in industrial microbiology you will be studying this in great detail here you just want to remember this slide as a my uh, food value some microorganisms which are used in food production and have some significance next very popular all over the world Uh, food it is categorized as a food in western countries wine the wine making process involves undoubtedly microorganisms they are produced from uh, fruit juice usually from grapes they are mashed as you can see with legs of course clean legs what hand what legs when they are utter clean if you clean your legs just like your hands the whole body weight can be used only that is the purpose nothing else doesn't have any Uh, bad value if you are crushing the 
grapes with foot as long as your foot are as clean as your hands try to understand so don't think much on that it is a practice they are crushed and it forms a must for white wines the white, uh, white grapes are used and for black wine or the red wine the red grapes are used with this also called as rose wines and the process for production of wine is fermentation it must undergo primary fermentation where malolactic fermentation by bacteria in the must must is the crushed pulp of the grape it is called as must m u s t not the english word must but it is a must which is pulp of the grapes and bacteria are added saccharomyces cerevisiae is added the difference between alcohol fermentation and wine fermentation is wine fermentation takes on for long duration so in couple of months to couple of decades 10 varsh 20 varsh 50 varsh 100 varsh it can continue for 100 years also as it ages its cost increases so secondary fermentation that is aging is the secondary fermentation primary fermentation is immediately malolactic fermentation by bacteria in the must that is the pulp converts the malic acid into lactic acid and in secondary fermentation it is packed better vessels are kept air tight these are uh, put into barrels these are called as casks c a s k and they are made up of oak trees oaken casks and the vessel is kept air tight these are uh, means stored in some deep chambers for long duration of time what happens during this long duration proteins are broken down particles they settle down they blend properly later on bottling is done and marketing is done as you can see in the picture second below down below that is a oaken cask that is made up of wood and all the liquor is poured inside it and like that in chambers in underground chambers they are kept for long duration for years together so the basic flow sheet if you see preparation of a must by stemming or crushing of the grapes or other fruit it can be done by foot it can be done by machine but traditionally it is used that if you use human hand and legs for crushing it gives rise to a good culture of bacteria then addition of starter culture of yeast and bacteria is done the fermentation of the must is carried out uh, by the juice uh, alone into wine then clarification of the wine is done by adding some chemicals removing the particles settling down etc the protein uh, clarification and then it is packed into casks that is barrels and kept for long duration for aging so you can see the role of microorganisms in wine production similarly the next beneficial aspect of microorganisms in food is beer brewing fermentation is a very huge and beneficial process when fermentation goes on the right path right chemicals are formed biochemicals are formed which benefit the human health this beer this beer is produced by fermentation of malted grains grains are taken now as you call there as must here it is called as mash a mash is uh, produced that is a series of temperature changes uh, activates different enzymes by the test organism and it produces desirable characters as well as fermentable sugars in the fermentation tank yeast is added this is called as pitching p i t c h pitching and again fermentation for 1 to 3 weeks only this doesn't go for long it is has a very stipulated time 1 to 3 weeks it uh, it is fermented and then transferred into uh, bottles and carbonated and then marketed the process is somewhat limited and uh, has huge fermenters in the bottom as you can see long fermenters these are recent fermenters beer fermenters are used barley is one of the most commonly uh, used grains it is moistened and germinated producing enzymes which convert starch into sugars barley is then dried into uh, malt germination and crushed to produce malt Ma mashing the malt is the second step with adjuncts that is additives with warm water and then here enzymatic activity generates more sugars solids are removed to produce wort wort is w r t wort is one of the important uh, component of beer then addition of hops hops h o p s hops means some flower of specific uh, dried flowers of specific plants 
they are used to give rise to a typical flavor to the beer cooking of wort then is carried out to stop all the enzymatic activity flavor is extracted from the hop flowers which kills the microorganism because of the heat then the hops are removed yeast is added all this is fermented into beer aging is done for some few weeks then filtering pasteurization and marketed as beer this is all about the beneficial aspects of microorganisms our next uh, topic should be the role of microorganisms in food spoilage but that will form the next part of my discussion as i said the whole flow sheet is divided of your syllabus from here onwards into three lectures today we saw the significance of microorganisms in food in that i talked about the beneficial microbes now the second aspect of significance of microbes in food is harmful microbes and totally third topic is of food preservation where we have to preserve the beneficial microbes and food preservation will do two things it will preserve the beneficial microbes and it will not allow the harmful microbes to come so that will be my third lecture but in our next lecture now here onwards we will be seeing the harmful microbes the spoilage types food poisoning types etc so i hope you understood what i wanted to say as i say i repeat again listen to this lecture once again if you did not bring a pen and paper today as i doubt listen it rewind it pause it when i am speaking don't read when i am not speaking pause it read the slides so read first listen second when you listen think about the slide and having done both this pause again and take down the notes so that's all for the significance of microorganisms thank you we'll meet again for studying the harmful microorganisms